So Adam, we saw many different demos now, and it, it was kind of a little bit more lightweight, but what if I really want to go do my own deep dive style? Is it possible to have the data out and do something? Yeah, th that's a great question, Frank. Um, so the tool that I would actually recommend for that is our exports tool. Uh, so this is our recommended most scalable solution for customers that allows them to be able to ingest all of the data, the raw data that's behind all of the costs that you've seen in this cost analysis tool, for example, um, it allows you to ingest it into your own system. So then you can kind of go light up whatever type of reporting you want, um, you know, whether that's slicing and dicing the data on your side with, with the raw data that you have, or if it's, um, you know, merging it with other non Azure related costs that you might have within your organization as well. Exports is going to be that uh, solution that we recommend for you. So yeah, this is exports in the Azure portal. So you can access exports uh, under the settings tab when you're within the cost management and billing experience. Exports, basically what it does is it dumps all of the data uh, for a specific scope that you have into an Azure storage account at, in a CSV file. So for example, here I've got my Contoso billing account, which is the where all of the subscriptions within my organization run up to. Mm -hmm. um, and so in this particular screen would be where I could uh, configure an export in order to get a, a dump of all of the costs. And that's the raw, the raw data uh, for all of the subscriptions and resources that I have within my Contoso billing account. Um, so yeah, so the, basically the way that exports works is, uh, you, you know, you create your export and it sets up a job in the system that will go and, um, on a recurring basis, based off of whatever schedule that you set up, it'll go wake up uh, according to that schedule and dump that that file of costs uh, into the storage account that you've configured. So I'll go through really quick and uh, I'll I'll discuss kind of the configuration experience for an export. So first off, you know every export has a name, so you know give give that a name. Um, we'll call this Adam Test. Um, and then there's two types of costs that you can utilize uh, within exports. There's actual costs, and so that would be, you know, the costs directly as they're reflected on your invoice. Mm -hmm. um, and it incorporates both usage and purchases. Um, and then there's also an amortized cost option. And whereas oh, yeah, if you're yeah, looking- Yeah, it makes sense. Since, since you prepaid right. then, so instead of having like one big month and like three, uh, like 11 tw uh, flat, then like you could just kind of- Exactly. It kind of peanut butter spreads it out across the course of the year. Exactly. Uh, like, you know, I, I love like peanut butter on bread. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's how it works. Um, so yeah, then you, then you can figure the start date for when you want to, um, have that export start. Um, and then we've got this other option here. This is specifically for larger organizations. Um, if you've got a ton of cost data, this file can actually get extremely large. Uh, the grain that it's at is actually, so, uh, you will get a row for each resource that you have that's accruing cost and each meter on that resource. So the grain is actually per meter per resource per day. You will get a, you will get a, um, a line item in that file that gets produced. So if you've got a huge number of resources, this file can actually get extremely large. And so that's where file partitioning is a, a great solution for you in order to kind of be able to break up what maybe would be a 15 gigabyte file into many smaller files uh, that then has a corresponding um, manifest where you can see, you know, what are all the files that were in the output that was created. Um, so definitely this is kind of the go-to. We would definitely recommend larger organizations to enable this partitioning setting uh, for scalability purposes. Then from there, you would configure a storage account that you want it to go into, um, you know, uh, based off of, you know, where, wherever you want to pick up the, uh, the data. Um, one other thing I forgot to mention, actually, is the, the export type. So this is actually uh, an important thing to discuss. So we've got We've got a bunch of different types here. So you've got a daily export of month to date costs, a weekly export of the last seven days of costs, a monthly export of last month's costs, and then a one-time export that you can configure. Um, so when, when thinking about setting up, like if, if you're setting up a, a, a data pipeline where you know, you're looking to repeatedly ingest these charges and, and kind of have a persisted uh, store on your side that you can use for reporting and whatever other purposes that you need, 
I would recommend that you think about kind of two different workflows here. There's a workflow to persist the historical data set that is not going to change. So that's the idea being once the invoice has been cut and closed, those charges for the last month are not going to change. And, you know, they're exactly aligned with the invoice. So in order to persist and store that historical data, that would be what you would want to use a monthly export of last month's cost for. So what that does is it wakes up on the fifth of every month and it will go and it will pull a CSV with the raw data um, of all of the charges that pertain to your prior month's invoice. And so that's great for invoice reconciliation purposes. And it's also really good for kind of persisting and keeping that historical data set up to date. Yep. Um, then the second export that you would want to configure is the daily export of month to date costs. And so the idea of that is to give you sort of the ongoing like live feed of the, the charges that have not yet been locked on your invoice to allow you to kind of see an estimate of the charges, um, you know, during the current month. And so that's, you know, every day it's going to wake up, it's going to dump a new file for you and uh, you, it'll be the most up to date charges for the month based off of, you know, the time that that job ran. Um, and so, yeah, those are the two main scenarios that I definitely would recommend taking a look at. We also, if you, you know, just have a need to get a file, uh, you know, on a one-time basis to do some an analysis or something like that, you also can configure a one-time export as well and configure the date range that you want that export to be for. Once you've configured it, it'll appear here uh, in the exports main the main blade uh, and you can actually see you know when was the last run when's the next run uh, along with some kind of uh, basic configuration options. now I can kind of actually hop into uh, a, an example CSV file that's been that's been output so you can see here that, that this is this, this just gives you an example of uh, you know some of the data that's output so you've got information you know in each record um, and as I mentioned each row will be Per meter, per resource, per day will output one row. So, for example, if you've got a VM and it's accruing across a networking meter and a compute meter, let's say it's got two, two meters associated with it, you would see two records for every day for that one resource. So, for example, over the course of a 30-day month, you would see 60 records for that one resource. That's exports. Um, yeah. I love it. And uh, let's go see the question that uh, the audience have right now. Awesome. Sounds good. 